welcome to the Oklahoma Bowl Weekend Primer 2019 edition. You like that? That's good. That's good, huh? Yeah. It's like a big man voice. You're a big boy. I am a big boy. Welcome, everybody. This is the Oklahoma Weekend Primer for 2019, just like we talked about. Oklahoma, Oklahoma Bowl 8, eight and, and Spiky, Spiky 8. Uh, you left out the cup. Oh, man. We were almost in sync. Almost. Man, we're almost who, like a two-headed goblin. That who can't are agree. we? Huh? Who are we? We are um, Steve and Scott. I am Steve. You are Scott. Oh, I am Scott and you yep. are Steve. That is what we are. Speaking of the two-headed goblin. Yeah. Have you heard this story that I don't know if it's real, but Jennifer was looking at it. There's like a conjoined twin that supposedly is suing his other half because the other half doesn't want to masturbate, but he does. (laughs) I don't know if this is, I can't even fathom that this is a true story, but Jennifer saw it like on Facebook and she was chuckling at it. And I was like, I don't know if that's real, but I don't want to waste time to go find out. Right. If it uh, is real, that's very <laughs> that would be so frustrating. God, that would suck. I'd like to do this. No, it's bad. Like I don't know how they're set up, but what I, if I don't you either. don't control either arm? <laughs> exactly. So Oh. So what if you don't control either arm, but you get all the feelings <laughs> for the part? So well. therefore the other guy doesn't get any benefit out of it. Right. Well. Yeah. Welcome to uh, another both down <laughs> tangent. <laughs> uh, no, I, I understand. It was, I was thinking, like, if that is real, though, that would be really odd. That would be horrible. Yeah. I mean, being a conjoined twin to begin with is probably not great. Right. But in your mind, you think that they always get along and they like hang yeah. out and they enjoy each other. It'd be worse if you didn't. Yeah, it would. All right. Let's move on from conjoined twin masturbating. That's all I got in my head now. <laughs> and let's talk about some Oklahoma Bowl weekend. Okay. Friday night. A lot of people will be arriving in town, and you're on your own. Yeah, pretty much this year. We got Pete Nifton coming in, and we got a lot of stuff to get done. Including picking up Pete Nifton. Yeah. Who should be in Dallas Friday, <laughs> so we will be <laughs> on the road um, Are you going with? Uh, I figured most likely. Cool. Okay. I'll, I'll do my best. And um, I- anyways, it's just going to be the start of a huge, busy weekend. Yes. Yes, it is. In, but it'll be awesome. In addition, we're going to get up super early Saturday. We're going to have to. I, I'm I'm debating on if maybe we don't just get a whole bunch of energy drinks and not go to bed. Get some cocaine, yeah. some monsters, mm-hmm. and just try it one weekend. Right. The whole weekend, stay up. One weekend won't kill us, right? 36. Dude, I think if you probably told Pete this, he'd probably actually be <laughs> down to like, let's do it, guys. Let's yeah. do it, mates. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, I need sleep at some point. Did I hear you right before we started recording that you ordered a whole bunch of fields? So nobody technically needs to bring a field. As long as everything arrives in time... And I was kind of going to leave this as a surprise for the day. Oh, see, this is where we don't communicate. It's not a big deal. See, this is like when you ruin stuff that I want to talk about later. You do do it early. Do I ever do that? Sometimes you do that. Oh, okay. Or if I try to like leave out information so people don't think like I'm picking on just their tournament rules, you go, well, we're talking about this tournament. Well, you are being very specific. So people have a right to know. Yeah, but people like in Italy might not know what I'm talking about. Then they'd be confused. (laughs) Well, they're not now. I'm doing it for the Italians. All right. Um, Yeah, so went ahead and ordered a whole bunch of fields through Maelstrom for us to have at the tournament. So every table is going to have a pitch. And And then we will probably have them for sale at the end, but at the price to where I'm basically just... Buying another one to replenish the Okay, stock. so you really bought these just so we have fields that we can set up for ease when people travel in that's, to any tournaments that we do. That's the idea. Whew. It's a lot of money. But you spent a lot of money. Yeah, I was trying to say, whew. Yeah. Well, that's, it's going to be really awesome, and that's what makes us different. Exactly. Steve, I mean, Steve is willing to do whatever to be top near tournament guy, even yeah. though it always costs him lots <laughs> of money. 
<laughs> He's uh, in forever debt for your love. So come out and enjoy one of our tournaments. So th- that brings me to the next thing that's new that I'm doing this year. Okay. Have you seen the folders? Uh, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. He's reaching under his desk. Oh, look at this. A fancy folder. So we're doing a folder. Dude. Got a fancy sticker on it. Why are you wasting money? It's not wasting money. Good Lord. I'm going to sue you for being my half that always wants to masturbate. Put people's like, names got... label up here, and then we can put the well, that's fancy. roster you... and the sheet. And... Do they get to keep the folder? Yeah. It has an <sighs> Oklahoma Weekend 8 sticker on it. See? See what you get by Steve running the tournament? <laughs> financially instead of me because I would not put a sticker on that. That costs money. Yes, it did. And so did the folders. <laughs> I, I understand. And so will the paper and the ink. And the... All right. But it's going to be awesome. That's all right. One day, one day we're going to run Chaos Cup. Good. And it's going to be super fancy like Oklahoma Bowl. Well, I'm going to put in a bid again for a Oracle Cup probably. So. Well, good luck uh, on that, bud. At some point. Good luck on that. We'll be in great fun. Oh, you're talking about in the future, future. Well, yeah, I'll probably put one for this next time, but we'll see. I thought the next one it's was next, already it's next chosen. Year. No. Oh, I thought it was already chosen. Okay. No, it's um, May 1st. You have to have the application in. <clears throat> okay. All right. I, I thought the next one was already chosen. Not yet. So we have fancy folders. We're going to have fields. You don't need to bring fields. Yep. Because even if we have more than 70 people, we'll, we will have extra fields <laughs> within our homes that we can bring down. Yeah, we have plenty. And at that point, people will be playing on the floors anyways, so, you know. I don't think so, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> no, but it'd be it'd be an awesome problem to have. Um, So you just want to start going over the rule packets? Oh, I was going to say, we do have new roster sheets that, or the Excel file. Okay. So you can go to the website and go to the rules section and you can download it there. And also, if you've registered, I sent it out in your email. Um, I, w- I want to say this. I know there's like many methods to sending in your <laughs> roster. Please just send it in the Excel file that we put up. It's so much easier. Not not a PDF, not a picture, not a army builder weird thing. Um, and if you want to customize it by putting your own team logo and changing the colors, you do you. I don't care. But just getting that Excel file that we can open up Excel is so much easier. And if you can just take the extra effort. I know not everybody has Excel, but go to your buddy's house. Everybody has access it. to Google, Google Sheets. Okay, then you have access to Excel. And uh, we would prefer that that's how it gets sent in. Yeah. Um, Plus, I, I'll be printing them off. So you only need to bring one copy of your roster just to make sure that you have one just in case. Okay. That's good. Ooh, that's more money. You're br- you're brutally awesome. <laughs> well, if I'm going to splurge, I'm going to splurge <sighs> the year that Pete Nifton's coming. Well, that's true. We gotta we gotta look really nice and clean right. for him. So. Exactly. <laughs> um, in case you're wondering, the plane ticket for Pete Nifton is bought. We know the schedule. Obviously, if we're picking him up in Dallas, yeah. So. Um, He's going to be staying with me for a couple weeks. Bring your stuff to get signed, maybe, or... Yeah, signed, sketches. We think he might be doing sketches. I'm pretty sure he will be, but I'm assuming he can only do so many sketches in a weekend. So, therefore... um, I'm sure he'll take commissions and... Right, stuff like that. I'm going to try to get, like, a print made, and then he can sign them, and then he can just sell them there. Oh, that's a great idea. Or something for people just to... Here's 25 bucks or something and pick it up or whatever. Sure. To support him. So, yeah, highly encourage people. I know not everybody's made out of money, and I'd rather you just come and have fun at the tournament. But if you do have extra money, remember to, to support the store, support Pete. Absolutely. Because they don't have to come. Or Pete doesn't <laughs> have to come. No. And I know we're paying for his ticket and stuff like that. But, like, once again, he's, the store's not charging us. He's nine. paying it by himself. So, I know. And he refuses to stay in a hotel. Yeah. So. He'll, he'll be compensated somehow. We'll, okay. We'll make him take the money. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll get we'll get him drunk like seventeen times. Well, that's true. That's for sure. We'll probably spend more money taking him to a barbecue or something. <laughs> exactly. All right. So should we just take a little break here and then come back and uh, talk about some Oklahoma Bowl eight? Sounds good. Both Down is brought to you by Wizards Asylum, your premier source for comics and games in Norman, Oklahoma. Check them out online at their new home, wizardsnorman.com.
Okay, and for first off, we're going to talk about Oklahoma Bowl 8, March 16th at Wizards Asylum in Norman. Right, and we're just going to go over the rule packet. It's on the Oklahoma Bowl website. The newly renovated and much fancier. Yeah, it's neat. Um, same rule packet. We're just going to kind of cover this, make sure maybe everybody understands it if you had a question about it. Um, so the early bird special is over. So we have the regular prices, which are 35 for Oklahoma Bowl or 60 for both events. And if you register for both events, we have special prizes for only people that register for both events. There's also a drawing, right? A team giveaway if you register for both events. That's what we're talking about. Do, okay. Yeah. That, that in addition to. Okay. Yeah. And there is some people every year who so, help support us and we thank them because they don't, they aren't going to come for one event or the other, but they want a chance to not only win the team, but like, hey, thanks guys for putting this on. So yeah. I, I, we do appreciate that. I know it's not a ton of people, but. Yeah, we definitely have some people just want to register to get the prizes and stuff or right. the, the giveaways. Right. So we, we do appreciate that. So um, if you wait until the day of the event, it's going to be $40 um, at the door. So uh, we encourage you to sign up early so we can have everything ready and go from there. Um, rosters. Um, did, did we want to talk about what we're giving away? I thought Here? we were going to do or? we're going to do that at the very end. During okay. Like the shout outs. I mean, like for signing up, not necessarily giving away, but. Sure. If you want to go for it. If you okay. Know. So this year it is the year of the big deal. So we do have the miniature of the big deal, which is us as a two headed goblin. Created by Steve Wolfhard. So we've got a cool miniature from R in the studio being made. Limited to, what was it, 100, I think? I believe so. And then we got cards made to go with it because they're awesome. And Steve Wolfhard, just in case you don't know, he is an artist for uh, the Adventure Time and various other like animated things. Mm -hmm. So, And he was also nice enough to go back in and clean up the heads. So we have custom kickoff dice for everyone right with our with our wonderful goblin heads of steve and scott <laughs> uh, and i've got scott doesn't know this i got some tokens coming in from someone some wood etched tokens okay i did not know that steve is spending more money than he should once again it, you know it just it just sort of happens now steve sits around and while i'm at home being bugged by children mm -hmm. steve thinks of cool things to do yeah and then he can tell everybody, like, see, without me, Oklahoma would be nothing. I have never said that. That is it such is. a lie. I don't have to say you it. You should see. I don't have to say it. You should see the it. smile on his face People right know. now. know. <laughs> no, we make a great team. If you weren't around, I'd be spending way too much money as opposed to just too much money. <laughs> oh, um, Just imagine if we were both single and no kids. No, that wouldn't be good. We would spend a lot of money. See, what else? We'd oh, be, We'd be bribing people to come. Yeah, I got like little stickers to give away to people. and I don't know, really. Just Oh, we got two sets of dice for each event if you signed up early. Right. And I think that might be it. Well, that's plenty. You can go on the website and see pictures of most <laughs> of the stuff. Uh, rosters. Yes. All players that pre-register at Oklahoma Bowl are required to send in their roster by March 1st. Um, that would be nice. You could email your roster to bdrosters at gmail.com. Like I said, go on the website, go under rules, download the Excel file, and please use that format. For sure. Um, sooner you can get it to us, the better. Because Using, using that format in Excel, you know, I know some people have like, we get stuff in PDF files, we get yeah. a, a JPEG. We get all sorts of army don't, builder things don't that we send don't us a understand. Picture of your damn roster. We, I don't care who you are. We see things that are like it does the math but doesn't show the math. Please, if you can, please, please, please use the rosters that we have on the website. And I made them nice and fancy too. And also, we're really close to going. I think it's Chaos Cup that says you have to use this roster, or maybe it was Slurpee Bowl. I think Chaos Cup. A couple. Years ago, and also you have too. to you have to turn it in when you register too. Right, we're very close to. I now understand why they do that. And here's the thing, people: if we have sixty people at each event, then that's a hundred and twenty rosters to check. That's more than Chaos Cup. Mm -hmm. So the sooner the better. And so far, we have one turned in. Hmm. That's that's pretty nice. Yeah, one. 
Someone else wanted to, it, but I gave them the. It, they haven't sent it in yet. It's February eighteenth, and they've sent in one. I do like on ours. I like that I have the word. You can add the additional skills, so you can see the additional. And just yeah, you you go above and beyond. That's just keep tinkering with stuff. I do. Um, real quickly, the tournament schedule. We're going to open the store at eight, and that's when you can start registering. If you're a walk-in, registration ends at like eight fifteen. And then we're going to try to start round one at 8.30. This does not mean walk in at 8.30 and ask us to, well, I guess you're printing off rosters. I should be printing off rosters if they get them to us. And people don't, you can still sign up the day of. That's fine. Please bring four or five copies of your roster. I should probably have a printer there that can make copies, but just better to bring your own. Okay. Um... And also, we always uh, say that we want to start at that time. It rarely happens that we start immediately. We start pretty close. We do. We, There's a reason why we say we're starting at 8.30. We run a tight ship. And we know what time we really want to start, but we say 8.30 to try to get there. Yeah. Um, also, it happens every year. And I don't... There's no way to say this without sounding like a butthole. But every, and I know people are excited to see us and we're excited to see you too. But oh, yeah. when we're trying to set up and people start like bashing their keys against the glass doors, like, hey, let us in. <laughs> and it's 725. Uh, that that angers the goblin Scott inside of me because I just, we want to set up everything. We want to have it ready. So when we do open the doors, we can give you a hug. We can shake your hand, say, hey, it's nice seeing you. And I know so many people want to actually come up and try to help. Mm hmm. And all that, or it happens every year. Every year, there's somebody that shows up early, or a group of people, and they're like, "Can we come in?" And he's like, "Well, we're setting up." And then they sit by the door and they look at you, yeah. like, "Oh, you're leaving me in the cold." Try to be there about five minutes till eight. That's what I'm going to suggest. And we may open the door early if we're ready, but yes. we may not. We probably legitimately are going to wake up at like four thirty in the morning. <laughs> Well, yeah, After going to. to bed at maybe midnight, <laughs> if we're lucky, right. and then get down there and try to set up. And it sounds like a lot of time. It's not a lot of time. We've got to rearrange the store, clean well, up the store. In, in all honesty, usually the most stressful time, I would say at least one of the top two stressful times of the whole event is the setup. Oh, that's Because that's, we go into the store, we don't know what's there the night before. because. Yeah. Friday nights is a busy at the store and sometimes it's super clean and sometimes we have to clean it because whoever was working, you know, forgot that we were running a tournament. Yeah. Usually for Oklahoma Bowl, they're really good about it. But for like Nuffleween, we come into oh, yeah. lots of messes and stuff. Or a and door so, kicked in. <laughs> or a door kicked in. <laughs> so it, it is very stressful that first, like, let us set up and then I'll gladly like talk to you, shake your hand, give you a hug. Because I do like seeing everybody, too. And, and the counter to that is we are th very thankful that we have a ton of friends that come to this. And not even, like, people we know, but, like, people we consider friends from around the nation. Mm -hmm. We can't give you as much time as we'd like. <laughs> we would love to just sit around, get, talk with them, and have a great time. But we've got to get things running we got to get things rolling and make sure that everyone's there having a good time yeah exactly so doors <laughs> open at eight round one starts at 8 30 uh 8 30 to 10 30 is the time for the blood bowl game and then we have a break and then round two is hopefully going to start about 10 45 then we play blood bowl and then we have a break for lunch hopefully from 12 45 to 1 45 and on this pretty much we should know when we want the next round because if we don't stick to the schedule that happens but during round two we should pretty much know when we want round three to start so yeah, if you sure. finish and you want to leave and get lunch you're welcome to but just make sure you know when to get back by exactly because we're going to start the round with or without you yes um, round three hopefully we'll start about two o'clock then uh four o'clock we'll have a break then we will have round four at 4.15, have a small break while we add up awards, you know, votes and stuff like that. And then hopefully we'll do the results and award ceremony at about 6.45. And that night, not only do we do the awards for that day, we do the drawing for 
well, a Oklahoma Bowl because we have a ton of stuff to give away there, but also the overall major prizes is what we call it. Mm-hmm. If you sign up for both days, you get entered into that. So we know a lot of, well, I wouldn't say a lot. We know some people come to just Oklahoma Bowl and not Spikey. Right. So we will give those away that night and then we don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Um, there's a little thing here that says what you should bring to the tournament. It says your painted Blood Bowl team. I want to asterisk this just because if you're a new guy who hasn't had time to paint your team, but maybe your bases all are painted so yeah. the positions are very clear, talk to us. We I don't want to discourage you from coming. We want you to come experience Blood Bowl, get get a super high on it, and then want to paint your team yeah. for the next time. So I did have someone message and he was like i want to play amazons but i just have a human team can i play them as amazons i go well i'd rather you didn't but if you have to make sure that the numbers match on the roster make sure you have your bases colored to show what positions are which make sure to have skill bands on to show your skills Mm -hmm. as long as we're not saying you have to do those things but if your team is in any way a little bit hard to understand for your opponent that makes things a little bit more difficult right now human versus amazon not a huge deal because it's amazons they're pretty similar Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're theoretically worse than humans armor wise and stuff so you shouldn't sure worry about it now the counter to that is if you are bringing something like an undead team and they're all 100% unique models from just random Mage ranges. Knight or, yeah. yeah, various other bones then, figures. Then, please do what you can to make them very obvious what they are. Exactly. And we're not going... I mean, if you show up and you have a, a primed team and no paint, we're probably not going to turn you away. But please don't. Just Just do what you can to make them as good as possible. Right. Uh, it says five copies of your team roster. Um, Steve just told you earlier, just bring one. He's going to yeah. He's going to print off the other ones. So yeah, um, shouldn't be an issue. Uh, mine will be in black and white. So if you want to color one, you can do that. Uh, it also says bring your Blood Bowl field and dugouts and templates. Just bring your templates. Don't, and really, oh yeah, templates. Yeah. You just need your throw-in template and your um, throwing template from the new if you care, or you can use the app. That's true. Because the app is accurate. Right. Your throwing template and your and your sideline template if you want those. Yeah, which you should be able to figure out. Um, but our fields have the scatter template and everything mm-hmm. already built in, so you don't need that. Um, you know, bring, bring your block dice that you're using, your D8, stuff like that. You will be using our dice at the tournament. We yes. prefer, and it sounds crazy, but, you know, we spend time graphically going through different iterations of this year's blood bowl logo and stuff like that. We take great pride that we just don't reuse the same one 100% over and over and Mm -hmm. just change the date. I know some tournaments do that. And a lot of people like that. We like to be unique every year. Yeah. Um, Well, we're lucky enough to have you who can actually do something cool every year, but we'd like you to at Oklahoma bowl use Oklahoma bowl dice Mm -hmm. and, not last year's dice, this year's dice. And it's spiky, use the spiky dice. And if you both agree that you don't want to use them and want to use something else, that's on you. Our rules are pretty much... <laughs> I what? wish Steve wouldn't put this caveat in there. That is not on you. If Steve catches you, that's fine. If I catch you, I'm going to tell you to change. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the two-headed goblin, folks. That's true. But I'm just saying... I. Steve's more lax than me. No, if I see you doing it, I will tell you to change dice. Fair enough. So you better hope I'm playing in Oklahoma Bowl <laughs> and not against you because we will be using them. I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't think we care as much anymore about NAF sanctioned block dice or GW block dice. I think we can agree to that. Yeah. I mean, you can um, use our block dice. We have a few left. I think. Right. So that part I will not argue with you. Although, if you're using a weird, like, not weird, but if you're using a non-standard, like Impact or Mm -hmm. ours or anything, if your opponent says, I'd like to use real GW dice. Yeah, you need to do that. Use those. Sure. 
pretty much if you just just be be cool if your opponent wants to share dice share dice if they don't want to share dice don't share dice just right and just make me happy and just use the oklahoma bull dice yeah and some gw dice of any type and share dice mm-hmm. and i'll be super happy all right uh things will provide uh name name tag a pin a match sheet obviously a folder this year yeah. custom dice and awards and yeah. the awards this year do we want to get into that now sure go for it uh dustin parsons who has been painting like mad all of our world cup teams and he's painted teams for giveaways and he's doing part of the charity stuff this year He's actually made the awards for us. Yeah, they're pretty We haven't cool. shown them off yet, but they're very cool. I don't know if we should. I think we should save it. If Might you be saving me. it for the day of. Or save it for like a week before or something mm-hmm. like that. So. They look pretty cool, though. Very happy with those. Uh, Oklahoma Bowl, we will use a special weather table. This is a D8 weather table because if you live in Oklahoma, you know you go through days where it is 70, like it was Thursday. <laughs> and then Friday morning at six o'clock, it was 29 degrees. And they said, this is the highest it's going to get today because it got colder. And we then had... yesterday, again, it was up, I think, in the 50s. Yeah. And we're about to get back in the cold. But I've been in a day where it's thunderstormed, snowed, and sunshined all in the same day. We had a day a couple of weeks ago where in the panhandle, it was in the teens and in the southeast side, it was in the 80s. Yeah, that's no surprise. And we also had two full days of complete fog. Yes, like it was I, ice fog on Friday night. But, or no, it was Saturday night. But like Tuesday and Wednesday of last week or two weeks ago, it was like the movie The Fog. You go outside at one in the afternoon. It was kind of creepy. Foggy. It was a little creepy. I like visibility. Well, I, I'm a big fan of fog too. But yeah. when you start thinking about <laughs> things... I like always, my imagination can go places where I get like, oh, well, let me just enjoy the fog. <laughs> my mind is I am where I'm so egocentrical that obviously only what I see exists. So therefore, when it's foggy, it's either God or the computer program just being lazy that day and not wanting to fill in the rendering. Ah, that's yeah. good. That's good. That's, that's what I always think. So we have special weather. <laughs> <laughs> Unless. Uh, uh, well. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. So, the special weather for Oklahoma, and it's always been this way. This is Oklahoma's little gimmick. Did we have uh, this in the beginning? Maybe not. Did we? I think we? we did. I thought we did, yeah. and I thought it was worse, though. I thought there was no perfect day on it, and I modified. I thought it was a D6, but oh, I could it be wrong. might have been, yeah. So, what we've done is uh, top table will ro- roll for initial weather on all tables. So top table rolls the weather, and then from there on out, if uh, through kickoffs, the weather can change. Um, if you roll a one, it's a dust bowl. It will combine the effects of two and three. Two is a drought, sweltering heat. Same thing as sweltering heat. Uh, and three is windy, so very sunny. So therefore, if you roll the dust bowl, you're going to have sweltering heat and very sunny. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't. We haven't made up any of our own. We've just combined existed play tested right. weather results four and five is a perfect day uh six is a downpour so it's pouring rain uh eight is a muddy mess seven, seven. i'm sorry seven is a muddy mess it's a a blizzard like the blizzard conditions it's hard to run you can only throw short passes mm-hmm. and then um eight is a we're calling it a tornado and you combine the effects of the downpour and muddy mess or the pouring rain and blizzard so therefore uh it's pretty chaotic. Yeah. Some people really, really love it. Some people really, really hate it. Yeah. The people that really hate it like to blame their failures in games. Even though they <laughs> rarely lose anyways, right. they always blame the weather on sure, it. Sure, of course. So, anyways. Now, um, as we alluded to, uh, this custom weather can be circumvented if we break last year's attendance. So, yeah, we double-checked because I think... We've lost sight on how many people we actually had. Yeah. We were thinking it was 62. It was just 60. We had 60. Still awesome. And I don't know. Maybe we've had 62 in our head because maybe that's what we said we were going to need to break. And then we thought that that's what we had before. It doesn't matter. People dropped as happens. Well, we did have for sure we had two people drop. So maybe that's where we got it. I don't know. 
Maybe we had 62 paid. Maybe that's where we got it. I don't know. We had 60 people play in Oklahoma Bowl last year, which is still a U.S. one-day record. And, world record. And for world one day. record for one day. Okay. and um, Just means we're tied with the two dumplings. If, 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 if we break that record, it'll be played in the dome and there's no weather. So everybody can have their perfect day unless it happens through a kickoff. And really, we're only 20 people away from that. Yeah. 20 people. We should break it this year. <laughs> I mean, I I started av- adding this in there because people were complaining. So I'm like, oh, if you can earn yeah. it, then we'll we'll go to this. Bring some friends. So it's just going to be a new thing. If uh, we can break the previous year's, you know, attendance, yeah. we will have a dome. If not, en- enjoy your muddy mess weather, complainers. <laughs> uh, special rules. Uh, obviously, no cards will be used. Um, Since we can now choose what we do with piling on, piling on is not allowed. Yay. Straight off. Huh. Just like GW should have just yeah. came out and said. Makes life a lot easier. And if you're complaining about it, don't care. <laughs> I just, I hate piling on. Always have. Um, Let's see. What is it? Uh, all teams, inducements, and stars that appear in the NAF tournament team list are permitted, except for the Wizards. And those can be found on the NAF tournament team list. Uh, no, are, are so, you the call sp- is working? Just to go back to that for a second. Sure. Uh, based on that, it does mean we do allow corn. We do allow Brett's. We do allow Fink to Fixer or... Cora Strong, whatever her name. The cheerleader one? Yeah. I forget what their names are. Sure. So we allow any of the inducements that are found on the NAF tournament team list, which you can find on the NAF, or by going to our rules on the website, clicking the hyperlink. Yeah, you better enjoy this Brett's and Corn thing, because while I've played them, and I actually enjoy them, I don't like them in Blood Bowl. Which I know is like the weirdest thing, just because. They're, I mean, they've been around since fourth edition. Sure, whatever. Just saying. It's not my blood bowl, man. Hashtag not my <laughs> blood bowl. No. So enjoy it for this year, um, and most likely going forward. Um, argue the call. Yes. You must have a coach model that the- is thematically accurate. This means if you bring a human team and you grab your extra lineman and go, "Here's my coach." If I don't think it works, I'm going to say it doesn't work. And, and you have to go by what we say. You sure do. We are going to be very strict on this. This is our way of making the rules work. So if you play someone and they just plop out in linemen and you don't think it fits, call us over and we'll give you a ruling. And this can go with anything. It could be somebody bringing an Arcadia Quest figure yeah. or miniature that's painted. And if we don't think it works thematically, and I mean... Let's put it this way. I should look down at the table and go, oh, that's your coach model. Mm-hmm. And understand it without you explaining one thing. One thing. And it, you can make a case for it. I'm going to be more lenient than Scott is. For, for sure. sure. <laughs> um, but that's just how it works. All right. Team building rules. You're giving 100 or 1.15 gold pieces to build your NAF tournament team. Up to 150K of that can be used for skills. That means if you wanted a Nurgle team and you wanted all four warriors and the Beast of Nurgle and all four Pestigors and maybe some rerolls and you wanted to sacrifice skills instead of players, you could do that. You can use your skill money to buy other things. It's up to you. At the end of the day, Everybody's going to have the same value team, equal footing on both sides. Therefore, I, also, I, 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 if you have 10K left to spend, add it on your coaches, yeah, add it sure. on your cheerleader, because we want all the teams to be equal. Yeah, if you send in a roster and you haven't spent all your money, we're going to just throw it on Fan Factor and tell you throw or, it on Fan Factor. Yeah, Fan Factor, coaches, cheerleaders. If you have a dwarf team and you don't want to use any double skills and you use, you know, 14, 140K in skills and you have that 10K left over, put it on your Fan Factor. Put it on your coach. Put didn't, it on your cheerleader. Didn't we have someone who bought like 10 Fan Factor last time? 
somebody spent a lot. I don't know if it was 10. It was like, we saw that and like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so you can do that. Um, there's CRP star players. I don't even know why that's in here. It's probably something we need to remove. No, well, oh yeah, I guess so. The heading is wrong, but uh, if you are including a star player at all, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's weird how that just slipped in and didn't so, bother yeah. to change it. Okay, on star players, if you hire a star player, let's say you're a human team and you want to hire Zug, you have to have eleven players before you take Zug. Although, we have what we have called green skin special star players. These, this is a list of star players made specifically for Oklahoma Bowl that any team can take. This is the old ga- gouged eye stars. This is Cromnar Dung, and this is Harry Badsall. These are orcs that will play for anybody, whether you're a human, Amazon, Chaos, orcs, it doesn't matter. These star players, you can have 10 Nurgle Rodder guys, and then you can add Cromnard Dung to your team if you want. He can be your 11th. And they all have the fan favorite skill. They all have the fan favorite skill. So these are... But it does not stack. No, it does not stack. So if you took two of these, they would not stack. But you can have up to two star players... That includes these green all stars, not more. Uh, and if you, in my example, if you were a human team and you wanted to take Zug and you wanted to take um, old Rip Sore Pain, you're going to have to figure that out because you need the eleven players first, then Zug, and then you can hire the green skin star player. Could you do? You can't do ten, and then Rip, and then Zug. No, you can't do that. Okay, so. But you could do 10 players and two green all-stars. Okay, that so works. That's how that works. And since this is a once-in-a-lifetime event for most of the people, you can play with multiple star players on separate teams. Right. Fluff-wise, we justify that as, like, there's wizards and, you know, it's Blood Clone Bowl. So, there's a, you know, you show up to this one event at the World Cup and you go, hey, uh, I'm Leonard <laughs> Lionel Messi. And they go, oh, you are? You look taller than normal. Yeah, well, I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, we'll hire you. Okay, so. yeah. <laughs> so there you go on that. Now, when you're building your team, like I said, you have up to 150 in gold pieces. Just like regular, you can purchase the advancements for a player of your choice. Normal skills, 20. Double skills, 30. We do allow armor or movement increases at 30. But you cannot have one of those and another skill or a stat. Right. Um, two players maximum may have two skills added to them if desired. Uh, no player may have a stat increase and a skill, like Steve's just said. No player may have two stat increases, and no skill or stat increase may be taken more than three times. So if you take a Nurgle team, you can only take three blocks. Mm-hmm. And at that point, if you say, I still want something that takes people down, you're going to have to go to wrestle or something like sure. that. Sure. All right. And it is a resurrection tournament, as pretty much most tournaments are. So everything resets at the end. I say at times I want to play a non-resurrection tournament, but my track record of the last couple of years just says I wouldn't have any players. I'd be yeah. with all journeymen. I don't... I mean, I would play because it's Blood Bowl and it's a tournament, but I don't really have any desire to. Yeah, it'd be it'd be hard. It's different. It'd be tough. Yeah. Uh, it's a NAF-approved event, so... We encourage that if you're a new time player that you've never been in the NAF that you sign up. It's five bucks on site. You get a free little gift. And if, so far for everyone who's signed up, you do provide your NAF name and your number. And I have been putting it in. This always comes up too. If you were a NAF member in 2007, you do not have to rejoin the NAF. Just tell us what your ID was. Yeah. And you still qualify. You just can't log in and see your stats. Right. But we can still put it in so everybody else's stuff gets taken care of. And if you refuse, I absolutely refuse. I don't want to pay you $5. We're going to sign you up anyways. We're going to give you a goofy NAF name. And that's what you'll always have. And then we're going to keep your rewards or donate them or give them away to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So if you're worried about coming out and someone not being NAF registered so your game doesn't get counted? It will get counted. It'll get counted. For sure. One way or the other. Uh, No legal procedure. Um, We know this can be a problem sometimes. Or if in an intense game, some people just forget. Yeah. It's not a big deal. We're here to 
win and have fun, but more than anything, try to have fun and not be jerks to each other. And it's along the same line. Um, the time limit is enforced. So whenever you're going, we will give you plenty of time remaining updates to try to keep you on pace. If you don't think you can finish, I mean, we're not enforcing the four minute rule, but if we need to, we will. You know, we can come out there and make you set up a timer on your phone or something and right. get it taken care of. I believe it was somebody a couple of years ago felt like through a couple of rounds that their opponent was taking long terms. Yeah. And then I think they realized they were also taking long turns. And I think they, if I remember correctly, they wanted us to enforce it just to help them speed up because yeah. they realized they weren't the only one, I guess is what I'm saying. And if you want to do it, there's no reason not to. You know, if you know that you can take four minute turns and you don't know about your opponent or you just want to start off that way, feel free. Now, I would say don't be a complete douche about saying, oh, well, the four minutes is up. You, your turn's done. And the first half, just get into the rhythm. I mean, I would say that you cannot force someone to end their turn at four minutes unless we have put them on that clock. Sure. This is not really a problem. So if you're listening Never for the first been. time and you're like freaking out, don't freak out. Usually after the first game, everybody speeds up too. Yeah. And there's some players that play like super duper fast no matter what. Yeah. Scott uh, Hess is like that. Scott Hess. So uh, weird. Neb last year was yeah. really a fast player. And then there's a lot of us who finish either like three minutes before the timer or right when we call time, you're already on your last turn. So don't don't freak out about that. So. Right. It's it hasn't been an issue, and usually these big tournaments you have a small percentage of people that's their first time and they're new, and then you have the veteran guys and everybody in the middle. So it just depends on the game. And if you're just enjoying yourself and taking a while, and your opponent doesn't care, whatever. Yeah, now, I, I've been to the tables where I'm like, you guys still in the first half, and they're like, yeah, we both know we're playing slow. We're both cool with it. Yeah, if that's okay. Yeah, and I'm like taking bathroom your breaks and yeah. had snacks. I've just been chatting. And it's like, okay, guys, if you whatever. Both are fine with that. That's your bonus points. So now we do give three points for finishing on time. So if you don't finish on time, you'll be losing out on bonus points. Right. And if we have 60 people, bonus points are a big deal. And I will encourage people to really finish your turns. Don't do this. Well, we're on turn six. You want to just call it thing. I hate that. And if yeah. I catch you, you don't get those points. Yeah. Just do the pass, 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 pass. It's That's not that hard. Yeah, exactly. But but if I know that you were on turn six and then you turn your sheet in and you have those three bonus points, I'm going to take them away from you. That's what I'm getting at. It's never happened. Do it. Don't make, Don't put us in that position. Sure. So as to scoring, uh, a win is worth 60 points. A draw is worth 30. A loss is 10. If you lost by one touchdown, you earn two bonus points. If you caused one more casualty from blocking than your opponent, you earn two bonus points. If you caused two or more casualties from blocking than your opponent, you earn five bonus points. If you clear the pitch, you get five bonus points. You can only do that once per game. If you won by two touchdowns, you earn two bonus points. If you won by three or more touchdowns, you earn five bonus points. And as I said, if you finish the game by using all your turns, you get three bonus points. Hopefully, this year... It could happen again, but last year we had to go to tiebreaker to tiebreaker to tiebreaker to tiebreaker. It was scary. <sighs> That's um, bad. Usually these bonus points work out just fine. Usually. Um, we might have to go to something really extreme if uh, we get a bunch of ties again this year. But I've tried to figure out something better, but I, I mean, I put a lot of work into it. And I know, and yeah, we've had privately lots of really intense like things, but I don't know what's better. Yeah, so currently our tiebreakers are the scoring system has been set up to hopefully get the most accurate representation of how everyone has performed. If by chance there is a tie in tournament points, the ties will be broken in this order. Winning percentage, head-to-head -head record, net touchdowns, net casualties, and then total touchdowns plus total casualties. If there's still a tie at that point, the tournament organizer reviews his best judgment in finding a way to break the tie. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. And if it comes down to that point, I don't honestly know what we're going to do. You took out the goblin fight or bribed the... That's, that's on Spiky. Oh, that's Spiky? Yeah. Oh. 
I thought we had the bribe the thing no. as a joke. Not on this one. And it's not a joke. I mean, it's in the rules. I will take a bribe. That's fine. <laughs> I lost because of a bribe. It's spiky. It's only fair. <laughs> it's we'll so, get, it's we'll so, get there. Yeah, it's so thematic. Um, let's see. We have a thing in here about painting. We've kind of already discussed this. Yeah, so we talked about it. We want to do three this. colors, but whatever. Uh, of course, we always, always had to encourage sportsmanship. And just a reminder, fouling 16 turns in a row, row and running up the score is not poor sportsmanship, but gloating and ridiculing your opponent while doing so is. That means I, sometimes trying to tell them how they could c- play their team better. Just remember that, folks. I know a lot of us who love the game are really trying to help people. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like to hear that, or at least not in that moment. Right. Maybe after everything calms down. I would also say don't root for other people to fail. Right. You can be happy if they do. Don't root for it. Remember, don't do the, oh, roll one, roll one. We mm-hmm. all want everybody to roll ones, folks. Don't touch other people's turn markers. You can just remind them to turn it. That's 75 fine. 75 times, yeah. Um, just don't be a D-bag. Oh, um, for timing. When we call time, how does it work? So everyone knows in advance. So if I'm playing Steve and it's turn seven and I started it and we go time, we finish my turn seven and Steve finishes his turn seven. Right. That's it. We're going to... You get to both have equal turns. And if you've done your turn seven and I'm on my turn seven. And I and say time, time, Steve finishes turn seven and that's we're, it. we're done. So it's even turns. As someone asked the other day, is like, well, we were on turn one. Does that mean we get to go turn two? I go, that's that's not what I meant by even. I just meant complete the turn. So, Right. And then the most exciting part, the awards. To be eligible for an award, you must have played all four rounds of the tournament and stay for the awards ceremony, unless there is a legitimate reason provided by the coach and they notify the organizers before leaving. Like you're flying out of town. You're sick. You oh. have to go meet the family. There's Give us good reason. If you just up and bail on us and we don't see you, your award might go to someone else. It could trickle down. So the awards, uh, obviously, the Oklahoma Bowl champion is uh, most points scored, second place, second most points scored, the Delzine Cup, third place, most points, third most points scored, and then best offense, team that scored the most touchdowns, that that did did not not place in first through third, best defense, the team that allowed the fewest touchdowns, not in first and third, then we have the most brutal, most casualties from blocking, that did not place first through third. And then we have the Stunty Champion, the highest rated Stunty team. This is just halflings, goblins, ogres in the standings. They don't get anything special by being those teams. So if they come in second, they can get second and Stunty? I think we've still done the trickle down before. Uh, Yeah, it's not addressed. But if for some reason... Oh, it's not addressed in here officially. Um, yes, I believe when Tim Har got second, he got second place and okay. the stunty board went down. First, second, third trumps everything. I, should, I would think I so. I should note yeah. that. The only award that we give out um, that you could win something and get this award would be fan favorite, uh, best voted team by your peers. This could be could be best painted. Somebody could like the models. Some people could like the theme. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've... Uh, handcrafted all your team and you're an okay modeler and you're an okay painter but your ideas were awesome and people love it right like it's whatever they want to use maybe they're your best friend we may which would be weird but that's fine we may have a painting competition as well but that has not been completely determined yet okay um, best sportsman is another award that you could win in addition to all these obviously if you're the best sport this is decided by player vote. This is why I'll never win it because somebody has to vote for me. It's hard in a big tournament like this too. I know. So but it, some people always get it no matter what. Yeah, you don't have to vote for someone you played. Just vote for someone you think deserves it. Right. You could be next to somebody who's either taking a loss well, maybe well, taking a before, win. Yeah. You know. Well. So that's voted by the peers. So it's it's possible somebody could win Oklahoma Bowl and get best sport. Mm-hmm. Back of the pack. This is our last place trophy. 
This is the coach that finished with the lowest number of tournament points, who was also not purposely sandbagging. If we notice that two players are trying to throw a game, we will just trickle it up. Yep. So we've had to do that in the past. So spread the wealth. A coach may only win one award, obviously except for the fan favorite. If they are in line to win more than one award, they will be asked which one they would prefer, and the next coach in line will be given the other award. Tournament organizers reserve the right to adjust the awards based on previously explained reasons or extenuating circumstances. And again, as we said, first through third trumps the others. So if you get those and you're most brutal, you're just not going to get it. You're going you're gonna to get first, second, or third. Exactly. Um, and then the final page is the just all the uh, star players going back to some of the themes that we did in previous Oklahoma Bowls. We've you know we've had the green all stars that was every type of orc goblin hobgoblin that would play for people, mm-hmm. and then we decided to say that the spellcasters went into the past and pulled out the old gouged eye superstars from second edition. Well, then their current living counterparts decided that was unfair so once they sent the young guys back in time then the old guys came back last year and now they're probably here to stay yeah we had a few people last year that really liked the ones that were there wanted to play different ones and we heard that from a few different people so we're like okay we'll just continue it for this year so they're not they're not necessarily game breaking and just remember anybody can play these stars yep if somebody seems game breaking Remember, you can take it. Sure can. You can't complain that, oh, well, he was playing Cromnarn Dung. Well, you could have too. So, <laughs> And he'll have the ball, and he'll bonehead right before the end zone. <laughs> and and if you, unless you're Brian too, you're, you wouldn't have, have saved your one re-roll for turn eight on the second half of the game. Yep. And then you re-roll it and you make it. So so we want to go through these? We'll just have people go look at the rosters. Oh, I think people should just, I mean... It's in the rule pack. We can briefly go over them if you want. You're talking about the green all-stars, right? Yeah, yeah we can do that real quick. So we have uh, old hard, Harg Vainkill. He's an old thrower. Um, he's 90. It's five movement, three strength, three agility, eight armor. He has loner, pass, sure hand, strong arm, fan favorite, and niggling injury because he's old. Yeah, all of these have niggling pretty much. All the old ones. Old Krug Pain Spear, 110. 6339 loner block leap very long legs fan favorite and nickling uh old rip sore pain 120 four movement four strength two agility nine armor loner frenzy disturbing present fan favorite niggling injury last year i believe he had five strength yeah and a lot of people took him <laughs> so we, we did kind of fix that some so what's the logic behind disturbing presence um he had a skill back in second edition called distract okay so like if you were throwing it he, yeah he had your, his hands in the face and stuff like that so i was okay. using the extraordinary mutation skill so he's just using his to cane it. to sure yeah come yeah. down uh old ufric skull hack 80k 5339 loner wrestle fan favorite niggling and then uh we have undead Hack Demon Cutter. Yeah, he died long ago, and he's now Orc Zombie. So not all the guys survived over the years. So uh, he's a zombie. He's a 70K, 4 movement, 3 strength, 2 agility, 8 armor, just like a zombie. Loner, tackle, regeneration, fan favorite. And that's it for the Forgotten Five. And now Cromnard Dung, a.k.a. the Crom. 170 6439 loner block break tackle sure hands bonehead and fan favorite yeah crom has been with us since the beginning he has and i we need to always shout out that we did not create him this is a slurp cast creation that they let us borrow yeah um and, and it's just stuck with it and we've kind of just taken him over they still have him too so oh, sure um, great, great character though. Great character and a fan favorite for sure. And then, uh, finally we have Harry Badsaw. Um, he's a hundred K he's an orc thrower. Um, five movement, three strength, three agility, eight armor, loner, dump off nerves of steel, pass sure hands, thick skull. So, and there's a little bio of each of them for a little bit of background. So, and I do want to say, no, he doesn't have a chainsaw. He's named after Terry Bradshaw. 
and it right. took me much longer to know than <laughs> I should admit. Right. He was, what was he doing? The, uh, the So in our um, league that we had with our friends for many, many years, 10 seasons, um, one of our buddies wrote a, a fluffy like magazine newsletter, newsletter thing yeah. every week. And Harry Badsall would do predictions on games, like right. who's going to win and why. And he was a terrible predictor, <laughs> except for like one, one season, season, he, he nailed dead like on. all of them. And it was really hysterical and stuff. And he was an, a veteran orc player yeah. thrower. And for the longest time, Steve just thought he was a chainsaw wielding orc. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, he's Terry Bradshaw, right? And he's I like, didn't, oh, uh, oh. Didn't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so sad so we've included him into oklahoma bowl so anyways all these star players are for you to take on any team any team and enjoy so i think that's that wraps it up that's wraps up oklahoma. for oklahoma bowl and that saturday night we don't really know what we're going to do as i said we've got pete in so uh, we may just hang around the, the shop last two years i think some of us went to hideaway pizza yeah um, and other people do things too. So just don't feel like you have to hang out with us. There's split. There's a lot of groups that splinter off. These guys want to go to the bar and drink. Yeah. These guys want to go here, go for it. You yeah. know? And if you don't have anything to do, ask around because there's people that, I mean, one year we did Pepe Delgado's with a group of people and mm-hmm. other people were like, we're here for Italian food. And we we're like, go for it. And like 10 of them went and did Italian food. Yeah. So if you're not, into whatever we're into, there's probably somebody doing something that you are into. And as before, as we've said many times, we would love to hang out with everybody. We know you want to hang out with us, but honestly, if you want to go do your own thing, feel free to do your own thing. And, and if you're going to be really smart, you're just going to go eat quietly and get some rent. Like, have <laughs> one of those dinners where it's like not uh, so yeah crazy. And then get real rest, and then you'll do better in Spiky Cup than the other people. <laughs> Although I don't know if that helps in Spiky Cup. <laughs> I'm right, maybe not. We're about to talk about that. So, anything else about Oklahoma Bowl? I believe that is it. All right. So this wraps up Oklahoma Bowl primer section, and we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with some Spiky Cup. All right, we're going to talk about some Spiky Cup rules now. This is the zany lesser of the two tournaments for Oklahoma Bowl weekend. Man, Steve's not going to say anything about that. Something wrong. Well, the lesser of the two. I mean, it is lesser. <laughs> is one just, less round. This is, to some people, their favorite tournament <laughs> of the weekend because of the craziness. Oh, sure. It's, there's no lack of insanity with it. So this is one of the crazy tournaments where it's totally by points. Um, if some reason you had way more points than a guy who, and you went 0-4, and, and a guy who went 4-0, you still win. Yeah. So. Probably not going to happen, but no. crazier things could happen. Same thing, um, pre-registration, you know, $35. Same thing with the price, same thing with the rosters. Yeah, same, all that. Same thing with the schedule even, sort of. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, we're starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Going to start round one at 8.30, round two at 10.45, and then lunch. So I know, I know it's early. Trust me. We feel it much more than you do. But we do this so that we can get it done by about 5 o'clock. Because it's Oklahoma City. A lot of the flights leaving Sunday, they end about 5 o'clock. Right. I mean, we've had, you know... We're blessed to have like Brian too, or other people fly in for it, and it's just kind of hard to get them to a plane on Sunday if they're going back that day. And if you're within six hours of Oklahoma City, yeah, you can get at five. You can drive home, and while eleven sucks, you can be into bed by midnight, and then just have a crappy day at work the next day exactly. by getting up at six thirty. You know, we got, it's not eight hours of sleep, but it's six and a half hours. We got Dallas people three hours away. Austin, Austin people six. six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, heck, even Houston at eight in San Antonio. Right. You so, know, if you really want to push it, get in at one or two in the morning. It's not bad. Sure. So that that's why we do that. And besides, starting the difference between starting at eight and nine really makes a big difference for the rest of the day. It does. So I went to a tournament. Where was it? Oh, I think it was the uh, 
Texas one. At but, the Citadel? Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, it's three rounds, so it's not that huge of a deal. But I can only but, imagine. But I bet the late start time made it feel like a four-round tournament instead of a three-round. Kind of, because, you know, we started later. It's not like I'm doing anything in the morning anyways. And then it just drags on into the evening. I was like, okay, well, still fun. Doesn't matter. Uh, same thing on what you should bring. Same things on what we'll provide. Weather table on this one is normal, so nothing funky there. And everybody rolls their own weather on this one. Yeah, like I right. said, nothing nothing weird nothing. at all. Okay. And you've got your special rules, just like the last one, how to build your team. Now, this one for the team build rules, each non-goblin team will be given one free bribe. This is in addition to the three you can normally buy. And then each goblin team... So that means I could have four. If you buy them all, yeah. Okay. You have to buy three, and you get one for free. Okay. And each goblin team will be given two bribes. Now, the reason for that is Scott likes the parody. I mean, it's 100K for a bribe for everybody else, so goblins are getting 100K in bribes. Okay. However, they have a maximum of four bribes. So you can buy two, and you get the two free. Okay, so every team has a maximum of four bribes. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So I thought that was fair enough. Sure. Because then goblins aren't going super crazy with the bribes. Mm -hmm. You are given 1.3 million gold pieces to build your team as normal. You can purchase, you know, everything just as normal. We do not allow any stat increases for this at all, just skills. And then for the skills, you may use up to 300,000 from your build total to purchase and add skills as you fit. But what that means is, is while you get 300k, you immediately think, ooh, with normal skills, I can get like a whole bunch of skills. No, you can have no more than 10 skills total be taken. Right. So I don't know. I don't know the best way to list this so people really understand. You can get up to 10 skills. If all 10 skills were doubles, counting 30k Mm -hmm. each, that's where you get your 30k. Yeah, really, it should just be you can take up to 10 skills using your money. Right. So we might confuse a little bit people that way. So I just wanted that to be clear because every year somebody will turn in a roster and I'll go, well, there's 13 skills. And they're Mm -hmm. like, but I only used, you know, 260K of skills. And I was like, well, if you read right here, it's 10 maximum. I really should probably just remove the, the dollar amount because it doesn't matter. Probably. Yeah, because it doesn't. We, We thought it was very clear. Yeah. It's proving year and year and it just, year that it's it, sort of redundant add, information. It's redundant and almost confuses people. So we'll know that for next time. We'll make a note. Um, and then regular skills are 20 and doubles are 30, except for stunty. Ogres, halfling, and goblins, only those, may buy double skills for 20. Right. Scott's not a fan. I'm okay, but I'm not. I mean, it's. So let's let's say. They take 10 skills, a goblin. They get those for 200K. Mm-hmm. And if I was maxed out on mine, there's only 100K difference there, which is yeah. still, a, I still don't like it. No. But have I used it before to take advantage of it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I played a goblin team before. I mean, an ogre team before in this format. I mean, Chance um, loves goblins, but he doesn't think we do enough for goblins, so he doesn't bring them. Well, the tournament's not really designed. No. Really to be like, oh, we want goblins to do well. It's just a goblin. Wants chaos and mayhem. Fluff-wise, the goblins are running this. Uh, specifically, Spiky Norman is a crazy goblin, so there is no limit on the number of skills on a player. If you want to put 10 skills on one player, you can do so. Right. That's and crazy. If you want it, I don't think there's a limit on the skills either. So if you wanted to take a... Ugh, I hate to say this, uh, Amazon team and spam block everywhere. You sure could. could. Yeah. So. And we do not allow piling on because, again, we don't like it. Exactly. I highly suggest uh, you look at the tackle skill because <laughs> there's going to be somebody with block and dodge. Oh, there's going to be a lot. Almost every team. So for this one, this is the return of the big deal. Last year he was brought out as a star a goblin star in experimental version for the naf 
but the NAF has decided to not include the big deal as a star player, even after their amazing debut last year at Spiky Cup 7. This has angered Big Deal, and they decide to do something about it. Emerp and Olik are going to make their presence known one way or the other. They've put their heads together and decided to make kickoffs their way to mess with the NAF. That being said, they do have their separate ideas of what they want to do and when. You will be provided a free Big Deal figure to use if they decide to take the field. Yay. Now you still have to have 11 players if you want to take a star player. Right, so you can't have 10 and a star. You need 11 and a star. So, yeah, but, we, but with the money... You should have plenty of money. Right. And I believe the way you have that structured with the money, you can spend it on other things too, right? Yeah. You don't yeah. have to spend anything on skills. <clears throat> right. So you could take... If I ever get the chance to play Spiky, I keep saying I have this roster with Lord Borak in it, and mm-hmm. it's, it's terrible. Like, there's no <laughs> rerolls in it. Right. But I could, like, fit him and some other people into it. Like Just all dirty players. Yeah. Just foul everybody. I think I kept the roster. I'll be playing them at Spiky if I get to play. That'd be fun. And then I'll hate every second of it. Oh, sure. So. Uh, The green stars are not allowed for this. That is just Oklahoma. Uh, You can use the regular star players. And just like the other one, uh, any multiple star players, they both get to play. Yeah, we don't want to take away from your fun. Same thing with the NAF. We're going to put you in the tournament no matter what. Same on procedures. Same on timing. Same on the dice. Scoring does get a little different yeah so you might want to listen to this very clearly if you've never been to or or i mean spiky cup because this is where scott loses i'm pretty sure i could go undefeated every year at spiky and not win an award because these injuries never seem to trickle for me typically wins do matter the most that's so that it, it does matter but in addition to the other stuff, win is 60, draws 30, loss is 10, and the touchdown and casualty bonus as before. All knockouts from blocking, fouling, crowd surfing, and weapons, and etc. Not going, not failing a go forward or dodges. They provide two points. All casualties from those sources, again, not for failing go forwards or dodges, count for four points. So this means if you play me and you knock out eight of my guys. That's 16 you points. You get 16 points. And if I recover all eight of them, and then the next drive you knock out four more of my guys, that's another additional eight points. Mm-hmm. I'm not not re- to include casualties. <laughs> right. So you're going to get a lot of points playing me. <laughs> so when, on your score sheet, you will want to keep track, do your hash marks, and then at the very end, write how many casualties and knockouts and just... Give me your your bonus points at the end. But it does come down to this. This is 100% why I made the tournament. Oklahoma Bowl is the premier event. It's the regular, no craziness besides the weather and the star players. But it's your premier level event that the Orcs put on to try to draw people out and make it look cool. And Spikey Norman's over here just trying to make a buck and cause as much carnage yes, as possible. Yes, they have the they have the big event on Saturday, and then Spikey Norman opens up his tent and <laughs> stadium and takes all the drunk people that are still just left in the streets mm-hmm. and gets them in through violence. And you know, there's just a ton of fireworks and wacky waving up, wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube elves, all that. Yeah, all that stuff. So good stuff. And just like last time, overtime, no such thing. Tiebreakers. This is fun. Goblins love causing chaos, cheating, and mayhem. If by chance there is a tie in tournament points, the ties will be broken in this order. And honestly, that's it's hard to do with this event. But Goblin Team wins tiebreakers against any other team. For prizes, not necessarily for overall listing at the end. Just putting that out there. Then most casualties. Then most casualties and knockouts. Then whoever pays the organizer the most, that would be me. Uh, Cash or PayPal are accepted. No personal checks. And then we have a knife fight, goblin style. Yeah, right. What? Nobody's going to fight. No, they should pay me. I mean, realistically. No, I know. But if they're not going to bribe me, then yeah, they can go fight. I really want to get down to the scenario where somebody's like looking at each other going, all right, I'll give you six bucks. Six fifty. I'll give you ten dollars. I'm curious. And then if they meet somebody like... You know, my, Michael Lewis, that guy, especially if you tell him, like, it's all the money's going to go to charity anyways, Michael Lewis will be like, 150. 
Well, you know what, Michael? You could have went to twelve dollars. Yep. Nope. One hundred fifty brownstone. You yep. ain't getting trouble. One hundred fifty. One hundred sixty. <laughs> Screw it. It's going to charity. <laughs> I can see that for sure. Um. But yeah, I would love to see that happen. <laughs> Painting, sportsmen, all that, same same as Oklahoma Bowl. And then we have the awards, which I believe are 100% in the same fashion yep. as Oklahoma Bowl. So, yeah, it's all the same. Um, we're also spreading the wealth, just like an Oklahoma Bowl. And then we have the crazy, crazy kickoff table for Spiky Cup. You know, it's not as bad as it can be. So this kickoff table, correct me if I'm wrong, will utilize the kickoff dice as well that yes. you, everybody's in the beginning yeah specifically so the, the kickoff dice in case you haven't known is a dice with three heads of one character on one side and three heads of the other so therefore instead of flipping a coin for a 50 50 chance you can just flip this dice and not break any miniatures in addition to they have two ones two twos two threes just like rolling a d3 dice in the book right so if you're not familiar the two-headed goblin is Emerp and Olik, who is Prime and Kilo backwards. So one is Scott, one is me. So if you can, I'm Emerp. <laughs> you are Emerp. So for each event, we have a, a name, and then you roll a D two to decide who it is. So, so this this is using just the either me or you, right. whatever they roll. Okay. So you know what somebody's gonna say? Hmm, I can't tell who's who. I can't tell who's who. Oh, sure. Y'all look like brothers. Yeah. I was like, screw you. We went to Arby's the other day and just walked in. And the first thing that got out the count is, you two brothers? No. I you think, look like it. I think, you know, I think she could have been bought for very cheap, if you get what I'm saying. Oh, no, I know. And I'm not talking like real cash. I'm talking maybe drug, Ar- drugs. Arby's loves the meat. Or so does she. food. Mm-hmm. And I think she was trying to engage in a, you know, ginger three-way. That's possible. She's heard the legends. <laughs> scary thought <laughs> so on this i will read the title and then you can read on a one and i'll read on a two all right so on a two it's the ref get them kicking team rolls a d2 to decide which head wins out so on a one prime or erp emerp emerp decides to tackle the ref no call outs for only fouls this drive Ooh. on a two olick decides to help the ref look the other way each team gets a bribe for the game. Okay. On a three, come on, crowd. As always, kicking team rolls a D2. So I'm not going to roll. I'm not going to oh, say okay. that every You're time. Oh, okay. You're not going to do that every time? Nah. Come on, dude. It's right there. All right. So uh, come on, crowd. On a one, Emerp gets the crowd into a frenzy. All players pushed into the crowd get a plus one on their injury. On a two, Olick gets the crowd to help out. All players pushed in get a minus one on injury. I notice a theme that Emerb, who is me, is kind of a D bag, while Olek is like a super helpful guy so far. Did hmm. you do that on purpose? Hmm. Uh, four. That's not how to set up. Uh, on a one, Emerb helps the. Oh, well, here you go. Helps the kicking team. King, kicking team can change to another legal setup. On a two, Olek helps the receiving team. Receiving team can change to another legal setup. Oh well, you. What? I'm still the D-bag. Why? Because I'm helping the defensive team, and you're helping the offensive team. You do this on purpose. <laughs> Let's keep it's, going. It's called a theme. Uh-huh. Five. You want to know a trick? Uh, on a one, Emerp teaches one random player on the kicking team the mighty blow skill. So I'm a D, D-bag. For the drive. Yeah. So I'm a D-bag. On a two, Olick teaches one random player on the receiving team the sure hand skill. Hmm. You're helpful. I'm hurting the other team. I see. Six. Let's give them something to cheer about. Emerp scares off the cheerleaders. <laughs> Each player loses a reroll. And if you say Olick humps the cheerleaders, I'm going to punch you in the nuts. Uh, on a two, Olick busts a move. Each player rolls a D3 and adds fame and cheerleaders. Highest result gains a reroll. Each team gains one if it's a tie. And if you roll a six, let Steve know, and he'll come to your table and dance a jig for you. Oh, that's nice, Steve. No, that's, that's a not cool how that's going to work. Oh. Uh, seven. Where that's weather wizard. Uh, Emerp makes the wizard wor- wi- weather wizard send a gust of wind at the pitch. Roll a d6 for each player. On a one, they are pushed back one scare- square away from the line. They cannot go off the pitch this way. 
On a two, Olek convinces the weather wizard to make it a little windy. Before landing, do an extra D8, D3 scatter, then resolve as normal. Again, I'm the bad guy. Well, only depending on how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Eight, we can coach better than that. Emerp beats up the assistant coaches when they don't listen. Each player loses a reroll. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> On a two, Olek convi- convinces the coaches to give him a chance. Each player rolls a D3 this and adds such, fame and coaches. This is such BS. Highest result gains a reroll. Each team gains one if it's high. <laughs> okay, keep going, bud. <laughs> Nine, you got this, buddy. Emerp convinces one player on the receiving team to make a blitz action before the ball lands. They gain the no-hand skill until the end of turn. Okay, so I'm, I'm the blitz turn. of the next turn. Okay. On a two, Olek convinces one player on the kicking team to take any action before the ball lands. Hmm. Okay, hold on. So I want to clarify this. Emerp convinces one player on the receiving team to make a blitz action. Mm -hmm. Before the ball lands, they land. I see. They gain the no hand skill until the next turn. Yeah. So therefore, if you got into enemy territory, you You still couldn't pick up the ball. You can't do a one turn touchdown. (laughs) Okay. Because that was pointed out to me like last time I did something like this and. It, but it was says exploited. convinces one player on the receiving team. Yeah, receiving. To make a blitz action. Oh, okay. Because you still don't want them to do the one turn by just moving. Yeah. Not taking the block. Last the blitz time, action. yeah, someone didn't you. take the block. They just went downfield through them. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Uh, 10. What's this? Uh, Emer sneaks a bomb to a random receiving player, not on the line for the drive. They get the bombardier skill for the drive. They do not get the secret weapon skill. Therefore, they don't get kicked off. That's right. what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. On a two, Olek sneaks a spiked helmet to a random kicking player, not on the line for the drive. They get the horn skill and thick skull for the drive. They do not get the secret weapon skill. Once again, I give them something that they could blow themselves up, and you give them something that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I mean, All right. you're not wrong. All right. 11. That guy sucks. Emerp runs out and attacks a random receiving player. Roll for injury. On a two, Olek throws a can at a random kicking player. Roll for injury. <laughs> See? He's All being right. kind of douchey. Kind of. Kind of. 12. Random. I get to... Mine's random, too, I guess. Yeah, All they're right. both random. All right. Here we go. 12. Two ads. It better to one. On a one, the big deal enters play in the end zone of the receiving team. Kicking team places him. Ooh. On a two, the big deal enter play, enters play in the end zone of the kicking team. Receiving team places him. At the end of each turn, each coach rolls a D3. The highest result, reroll ties, gets to control them for an action. They ignore all tackle zones and all blocks are not assisted in any way. Nice. So you Sweet. wanted to say what the skills for... For the big deal art? Yeah. Let me get him out here. This is an awesome little card. So the big deal, just going over his card, he's a ginger mutant goblin. He's 80 uh, gold pieces, 80,000 gold pieces. He has six movement, two strength, three agility, seven armor. He has dodge, stunty, two heads, fan favorite, all-star, which is the same at pro, is the same as pro, but works on anything but a one. So only a one's a failure. And then... Slightly stupid, which is exactly the same as Bonehead. Right. So So he's not game-breaking. So when he comes out on the field, he's not going to have anybody... Oh, Bonehead doesn't need help. That's slightly... That's just stupid. Right. That's really stupid. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Not game-breaking. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you can try to get a blitz on him, and... I mean, if someone casualties him, they, they get the points. So... And if he casualties someone, then nobody gets the points. Gotcha. So, so, yeah, there's a theme to it. Yeah. I'm a D-bag, and you're a cool, awesome guy. And this is why people send you, like, bacon crackers and stuff. And then when I see them in person, they try to hit me in the nuts. Because they think I'm a jerk. Fair. you buy all their love by buying little things for them for the tournament all the time and spend all your extra money. Well, I'm like, Steve, we don't need stickers on those folders. But they look cool. They do look cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, so that's both tournaments. That is both tournaments. Man, I'm kind of excited now. I kind of hope I get to play. I want to get Lord Borak on the pitch. Probably realistically only one game. I don't think I could handle that team three games. <laughs> yeah, Lord, ba- L- Lord Borak kind of sucks. Uh, he's a lot of money, dude. But if you found everybody every turn, 
<laughs> I think the way my that team I made up is set up is I'm going to foul with him and use his dirty player and try to play him thematically, yeah. which means I will get destroyed. Yeah, pretty much. But oh So well. it is uh, St. Patrick's Day that day. It is, so everybody's going to be drunk. Hopefully. But more importantly, it is Scott and Drew birthday Eve. That it is. <laughs> Ginger Eve. So uh, basically after the tournament ends... We pack up and set you free. With, yeah. We will thank you. And this is like the saddest part of the thing because everybody's giving hugs, goodbye. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be like, this was the longest weekend and it's already over. And I want to reiterate if you come and we appreciate you coming, we love seeing you. If we are terse or short with you at any point, it's probably because we have a thousand things on our mind. And we're not trying to be, it's just we're trying to get stuff done. And if you think Steve's always nice and I'm always mad, that's because <laughs> there's propaganda in the spiky cup to make you think that. I don't know if that's the truth or if it's just how life is. I'm pretty sure you posted. Truthfully, though, I'm probably a nicer guy than you behind the scenes. Mm. You yeah. only say that because you have children who love you. No, I'm saying like. In general, I, I enjoy life. I get out. I'm social. Yeah. You stay in the house, and you don't want to get out, and you order everything from Amazon, like like my wife, Jennifer, who is just like you, and she'd rather... <laughs> Technically not wife for anyone okay. who's confused. All right. I just want to make sure. I mean... That's true. We'll That's let true. you know I'm if sorry. it happens. I'm sorry. I'm getting in this habit of calling her my wife all the time, because it's just easier. Yeah. Uh, common law wife, probably. Right no, now? there's no common law in Oklahoma. There's not? That was removed years ago when they wanted to make sure the gays couldn't marry. Oh, of course. Because, because they're, they're the they, dread of society. They got rid of the civil union because okay. blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, she's just like you, dude. Yeah. I need a knee brace. Okay, well, should we go over to Dick's Sporting Goods and get you a knee brace? I already ordered one on Amazon, and it comes in 24 hours later. And, of course, it's from China where everybody is built different. Like you used to buy those shirts. Remember I did how you used to buy time. shirts? And uh, here, can you fit these shirts? No way, dude. These are for like a toddler. Yeah, well, they're said insane. extra large, and I bought them for me. Jennifer's done the same thing, and I was like, "You and Steve have to stop having similarities." No. No. And you order everything on Amazon. So here's the thing, though. I got a new desk from Target because uh-huh. it was the best one I could find, uh-huh. and I want a, a monitor stand. And I wanted a new uh, USB hub because I moved where the printers were. I need some things. So I go out and look. I went out and looked. I can't find monitor stands. I can't find a good USB hub. That really I might be I can't find a USB too. extension. You know, all these things. If we had a fries or a good tech store around, I could probably go pick them up. We don't have that. We had, like... My best <sighs> option for tech is Office Depot. We had, like, Or a... Best Buy. A scale come in the mail, a plunger come in the mail, all these things. And I'm like, we're getting packages almost every day. Well, we needed this stuff. I was like, we could have gone to the store. Yeah. I'd rather not go to the store. I'm like, you're just like Steve. No, I like going to the store. I typically buy stuff at Dollar Tree if I can. <laughs> well, that stuff doesn't hold up. It's a dollar. <laughs> well. It's a dollar. Okay. They're amazing. Whatever. This has nothing to do with the tournament. It sure doesn't. So um, we're going to wrap this up. We will come back out with, what, shout outs to our sponsors, sponsors and stuff. Yeah. And kind of go over what's in the prize pool that we know of as yeah. of right now. So Sounds good. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We'll shout get- outs! Okay. Yeah. Didn't even think about that. Yeah, gotcha. It is Prime definitely... shout outs! It is shout out time. So, uh, I'm looking over the list of stuff here. We have a uh, painted... First off... Oh. Before you're, we... Are you going to interrupt me every time I try to talk? Apparently. I'm really excited. Okay. So, before so, uh, we get to so, so, actually stuff so we're giving away... Yeah, was a way. We have some... Want to give a so, shout out? So, we're going to go... Stop it. See? Why? I'm, E-merp. I, I'm E-merp. I'm a jerk face. <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to do. Well, you're doing it. All right, so we do want to give a shout out to R in the studio for making the figure, Akaro Dice for hooking up with the block, uh, the 
kickoff dice. Chest six as always for our regular dice. And then we're going to go through, oh, and star player cards for the card. Yes. Uh, the, what was it? Star player cards dot com? Just, just go on Facebook. Star player cards. Jason Weaver. Jason Weaver. Jason Weaver will hook you up. And then we have the major prizes. They're like major awards. They are a major award. <laughs> it's a major award. And these he are won the, that. These are the ones you get if you sign up. Well, you get entered for if you sign up for both tournaments. Everybody gets one ticket. That's it. There's no other way to get them. So you have to play pay for both days right. to get this ticket. Mm-hmm. So if you had a wedding on Saturday, pay for it. Show up at 6 o'clock. We'll do the drawing. You're in it. Yeah. And then you can play it on Spiky Cup. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you, even if you just show up at Spiky. I mean, if you win it, you win it. So. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. So we have a, a fully painted orc team. And when we say fully painted, we don't mean 12 models. We mean a full painted orc team. Yeah, this is, I don't have a clue what the models are, but they're really cool. So I liked them. And then we have a painted undead slash necro team. And this is using 2016 figures. So oh, it's, it's a really okay. unique build. You can go on OklahomaBowl.com and go into giveaways and see all this, by the way. We've got a full Grebo Wog Sabi team. That was donated by our fan, Ken Hinchliffe. Describe Wob Sabi. Wog Sabi? Is this... Uh... It's the Goblin Oni like oh, Japanese okay, demon okay, team. Oh, okay, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, Ken wasn't oh, using it. Oh, these are it, nice. So he decided to donate it. Oh, that's really awesome. Thank you, Ken. And then... Carol Malta Case is sending us a, a case or two, it looks like. Two yeah. cases. We got two cases for this. He, they sent us... They always send us so much. Dude. I want to. I wish we could win of stuff from our own tournament. I know. I'm just going to buy stuff from KR Multi Case because <laughs> I, I have to now. Yeah. Well, if you're out there, yeah, support them because yeah, their cases are really nice. And if you're going to the World Cup and you want a case to take your teams, please go to KR Multi Case and tell them that you went to them because of us. Yeah, that that would actually really help a lot. Uh, we do have some really cool sets of metal dice from Die Hard Dice. So these are really cool, and yet I'll be the first one to say I don't know what I would do with metal dice. Because to me, when I play, I wouldn't want to roll them in fear of hurting game components or stuff. But this we is, sell these all the time at the store. This is more for Dungeons & Dragons type of games. We sell them all the time at the store. Yeah. We sell out of them. These look really awesome. I mean, if I won them, I'd be happy, but I don't know what I would do with them. Right. So... And then Willie just sent us so much stuff. So these are going to be individual awards. Is that correct? Yeah. What I'm seeing here, we have a Willie's miniature rat ogre. We got two of them. Two of them, actually. Two oh, different, two different poses. Screw uh, balls. Well, that's kind of neat. We got all kinds of tokens. Elf tokens, vampire tokens, wood elf tokens, human tokens, chaos dwarf tokens, chaos tokens, fame and leader tokens. See, I like that. And I like this next thing that you're about to talk about. Uh, the World Cup trophy? Yes, I, th- I love that trophy. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful. cool trophy. Um, Tarsus Miniatures sent us a Beer Beer figure, which is apparently modeled off after a real guy, which I didn't know. Beer Beer? Beer Beer. Is he a mutant? No, he's just like a human. He's like okay. a Zug type. I got you. And uh, we've got a Grack and Crumbleberry, donated by Brownstone, Michael Lewis. Oh, it's the Brownstone Award. Uh, we've got an Orphwerner model. I don't actually know where that's from. Who donated it? I don't know. I think I just had it. <laughs> okay. And it's kind of cool. Got a, it's different. A 2013 Chaos Cup resin trophy thing. Right. And uh, then we have some uh, Charlie Victor and Strangle Bowl cards, which I'm not... Is that the, like, apothecary? The apothecary and the wizards and stuff. That's neat. And then we got a whole bunch of other stuff that I haven't put up yet. Okay. But those are the major awards. Yeah. That's if you sign up for both days and of course we'll have drawings for each tournament so yeah there'll be there'll be yeah. more stuff to give away but that, man that's a lot yeah, that's a lot and i still got more coming because star player miniatures they got they sent us some stuff wait is this more stuff that you're just about to go cycle down through for yeah. oklahoma Bowl only yeah this is oklahoma Bowl only stuff so we haven't <laughs> jesus christ uh a painted dwarf team so this one i really like it's a 2016 work team uh, uh, dwarf team but it has the really cool death roller of a guy holding a giant die. Oh, well, that is neat. Man, we got 
I want to go to our. I'm not, and then we've got. I'm gonna a, make Jennifer play all weekend <laughs> just to win stuff. Uh, we've got a painted house Escher Necromunda team. Yeah, this is awesome. It's a really cool team. Um, hadn't seen it before, but it it's perfect for like Amazons or humans or dark elves or. Yeah, it's, it's a converted team from the Necromunda, but yeah, you can use it for whatever. Yeah, it's really uh, awesome looking. More stuff from KR Multi K says normal another set of different variety of metal dice more rat ogres good lord they hooked us up too yep. willy assassins willy again just so much stuff they sent us more another sprue skaven tokens generic tokens high elf human elf union Ooh, i want that the Kimry star player Kimry catcher star player is really awesome he can be humorous carthball and then we got a fame and leader tokens uh, so tarsus miniatures they're the ones who did the tournament skill pack yeah, where you could put the stickers on your bases. Yeah. Those are neat. Those are really nice. Ooh, I kind of like those. Then we got a Gaspez Arts Zombie. Willie Miniatures sent us some red block dice. And then as always, like I said, Star Player Miniatures sent us some stuff and some other stuff that okay. haven't been put up on the so website. So that's just specifically for Oklahoma Bowl. Right. Good Lord. We are giving away six total painted teams for the weekend because mm -hmm. Steve just scrolled down to Spiky Cup giveaways. A Skaven team. Fully painted 2016 with a customized rat ogre. Where, where are we getting all this? Because have you just been buying? Yeah. I buy teams throughout the year to give away. Good Lord, folks. We're not even going to break even because <laughs> of Steve. I, I love this modified rat ogre. Yeah, it looks like an orc, black orc body with, with a, a head. Skaven head. That's awesome. And it even has a tail on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it has two feet on the ground, so you won't break it by accident. It sure does. Uh, then we got a painted house shield, I think. Battle Mages team. So they're really, click on that. I want to see that. They're really interesting models. And again, like the other one, it's just good for all kinds kind of, of whatever you wanted to make it. Other stuff. Ooh, those are cool. Like, I would probably use this as Dark Elves. Mm hmm. I can see that. Yeah, that's neat. Where the hell are you getting all this stuff? I spent um, too much time on eBay. Uh, more multi-case stuff, more dice, more, more Willy ogres, stuff, more, more Willy tokens, stuff. Uh, Willy Halfling referee. Ooh, I want that. Another dice, more tokens, Tarsus Ooh. skill stickers again. A killer clown. More killer clowns. <sighs> and then all kinds of stuff. That's awesome. And I don't have any of this up there yet, but we... I've got so, other teams that we're going to be putting up for charity. We so, are. So last year we did a what a, a charity for battered women, right? It was for Dustin Parsons. He wanted to start doing charity, and I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. So he did one local to him, and this year we're doing one local to us. It's for a organization called Positive Tomorrows. They're at positivetomorrows.org, and it's basically it's. Oklahoma's only elementary school specifically for homeless children. It gives them some stability and education while the parents get the support they need to create a better life. Hmm. It's been around since 89. I looked into a lot of local charities as to where the money does the most good. Mm -hmm. And this felt like a really good one. Right. Because sometimes you don't know if you donate 100 bucks yeah. if only 80 of it go or only right. 20 of it go. And from what I saw on this, basically they gave out over 100% of the money they took in. Good. Because they got matching donations and stuff and everything. So not entirely sure about what we're doing for charity raffles. I know we will have some painted teams. So I know bring some cash if you want to get in on the charity raffles. And there was good stuff last year. Oh, yeah. And they will probably be... Can we win the charity raffles? Yes. Okay. That's all I need to know. Yeah, we can... We will not win any of our own prizes. The charity raffles, uh, if we do win them, uh, it's we're putting in our own money. So, so I need to put nothing. All, I need to sign all my kids up for a clone bowl and get a few of those teams. If you give me money, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Anything else? No, that's a lot of stuff, man. That's more. That's like almost double the stuff that I thought we really had. I really do. I'm gonna kick your butt, really. I I think next year you're gonna we're gonna have to put everything on a spreadsheet and look at the money because I I'm scared one day you're gonna knock on my door and ask for like some food and I'm gonna say what happened and you're <laughs> like well you know all those Blood Bowl tournaments I said we were okay on and I'll say yeah and you're like I kind of spent a lot of money <laughs> uh, yeah that's okay 
I mean, the whole Pete Nifton thing, which is amazing, but you're spending a lot of money. Everything should be fine. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just, we always have stuff for sale in the shop. We have <laughs> I know extra everywhere sell. I mean, it's fine. Steve doesn't like me looking at the money side. Steve doesn't like looking at the money side himself. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. I know, but there's a certain point where you go, we've done enough. and <laughs> This year, I pulled well, out some extra stops. Okay, all right. I, I will enough. say that. You say that every year, though. But I, that's okay. I do say that every year. <laughs> the one year we don't break the attendance record, that'll be the year that I, I stop going out overboard. <laughs> okay, that's fair <laughs> like, enough. Screw you guys. You didn't show up. So let, let's do the best we can, folks. We need to get... At least 22 more, well, 21 more people. We're at 41, aren't we? 42? Yeah, 41 signed up, but one's not For sure attending. coming. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we still need about 22 people. And sure. Life is always going to take about 10% of them away, so we need about 30 more people to sign up. So Please. just grab your friend, tell them to come on up, have a nice weekend. It might be spring break in your area, no matter what. Yeah. Come and enjoy the weekend. It's um, Pete Nifton. I mean, well, why would you pass up an opportunity to see Pete Nifton? Yeah. I mean, that's a a, a deal in itself. But It doesn't I, even feel real sometimes. It's no, like, it really doesn't. <laughs> I was telling Jennifer, like, you know, like, Pete's going to be here. And not only is he going to be here, he's going to stay here for a bit. And we're going to be hanging out. And this is the guy's artwork that I, it, it just brought that the life to that universe. And this is why I fell in love with Blood Bowl. Mm-hmm. And now he's going to be here, and we're going to be talking and hanging out more and just everything. And then when he leaves, I'm going to be mad, like, I should have got him to do this. or <laughs> try. And I don't want to bug him and ask him to do right. that. I don't want him to be like a do some parlor tricks for me while you're here. But at the same time, let's be realistic. I'm Right now, I don't have going to England on my docket of plans to do in the next five years. Mm-hmm. And um, we're near death's door, you know. I'm almost 45. <laughs> uh, and and you're not in good health, Steve. I'm. That's what people don't know. I'm in decent health. <laughs> Let's not put that out in the cosmos. <laughs> oh, I got to get back on losing the weight thing, man. Yeah. I've really crapped the bed this last, since Christmas. That'll man. help losing weight if you crap the bed. Um, being on furlough. Yeah. And then when you do eat out or something, you eat super cheap, which mm-hmm. is terrible food and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's been cold, I, so you don't go out. But I did it run. myself. Well, I did. Me and my daughter went out and ran last week when it was nice. Yeah. Me and Eden actually ran the streets, and boy, I was way out. She ran more than me. And, well, I believe it. Whew. But I was like, this actually felt good. But then it got cold. It always like, does when you do it. And man, I swear every year I get older, the more and more I go like, Maybe Florida's not really a bad option. <laughs> Maybe South Texas is not a bad Arizona, option. By the I totally, Mesa. Yeah. By I, the baseball stadium. I'm starting to understand why old people move to those places. Mm-hmm. So. so this is Enough old people talk, problems. I guess. Yeah, it's old people talk. So come on out to Oklahoma Bowl. You will have a great time no matter what. We have a wonderful pre-made miniature. Um, I don't know what else we can do to convince you to come out. If you're not coming out, if you have the time and you have the money, if you don't come out this year, I don't know what we can do to get you to come out. So Next year is going to be less for sure because I'm going to be busy with <laughs> World Cup stuff. Yeah, we ain't going to get Pete Nift in two years in a row. Right. Most likely. Unless so, he has a great time. Maybe this would be like his annual trip to the that's States. That's possible. Then I feel bad for him because he's just always visiting Oklahoma. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there are better places to go, man. No, you guys are cool. Okay. Um, so, anyways, come on out, come see us, have fun, turn in those rosters. Please double check that they're correct and get them sent in on time. Please, 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 and use our rosters. I think that's it. Anyways, thank you if you've already signed up. We appreciate your support. And even if nobody else signs up and we only have 40 people there, it will still be just as fun. Right. No and problem. lots of crazy weather. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, see you there. See you guys. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Fat Finley, F-A-T-F-I-N-L-E-Y, and Steve at Kilowog2814. 
If you want to know if your team name is both down approved, send a tweet to at BD approved. If you'd like to email them, the email address is both down at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at both down.com or at facebook.com forward slash both down. Lieutenant Drebin, police squad. Oh, I remember you, Drebin. Uh, well, what do you want? I want to ask you some questions. You familiar with that face? I don't know. My memory ain't so great. Oh, yeah? Maybe this will refresh your memory. I don't know. It's still kind of hazy. How about this? Yeah, I remember him. I used to see him around. Why do you want to know? I can't tell you that. Well, maybe this will help. I really don't think I should. Yeah, you still don't think so? All right, his name is Nordberg. He's a cop. He was no cop. He was dealing H. What? I'm telling you, he was dirty. Oh, you sniffling scum. I ought to run you in right now. All right, all right. He worked at Ludwig Shipping. He tried to push something on one of my boys, I swear it. So what are you going to do about it, copper? Well, why should I tell you? Maybe this will help. I still don't think I should tell you. Can you spot me a 20? How about now? All right, I'm going down to Ludwig's office. I'll find out if you're telling the truth. 